Good morning. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. There's people here. There's people here, and there's people out there, and I'm so glad that you are out there watching and that you are in here worshiping. And if you're out there watching going, wait a second, don't worry. Uh, there's only 49 of us here. 49 people here, and uh, we're working on a system, reservation system, so that as long as our numbers need to stay at 50, we'll get you in here so that you can worship. Welcome to all of you who are here. I know it feels like we've been in exile, right, for a year. It's been a whole entire year. Uh, but here we are together, and I, I need, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I need to say a special thank you to our live stream dream team, I call them. Ooh, they have been working just hours and hours. James, James, Andrea, Lucy, uh, as well as my own staff, and you know, the Dawn and, and Vicki and Chanel, Charles, Shirley, Elvio, who's back with us, Paula, and just everybody who has uh, been sticking with it all year long and for all of you who have been watching and supporting the church it feels good to be back and I know with 49 of us I wish there were 349 of us here today that day will come so until that day comes uh, just let's rejoice in the opportunity we have today to worship and also be patient with us this is another transition we got used to a, a rhythm of how we did worship the last year and now we're having to rethink things one of those is children in worship uh, that's not going to air as part of this service. If you want to join Children of Worship after the service today, end your live stream feed, and all of the stories will be uploaded on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when you're not here, uh, you can watch everything. It'll be posted there as well as being uh, streamed live. So you can join Children of Worship right after the service today. And today is birthday Sunday, so we wish happy birthday to everyone in this month of March. And I don't know if this is true, I heard a rumor, and no, no one's here to confirm it for me, but um, Enrique Richards celebrated a big 8-0 yesterday, so uh, happy birthday to Enrique. If you were here, we would sing to you. Uh, I hope you had a chance to celebrate, but not to be outdone, last week, uh, uh, our own Doreen Haney celebrated her 91st birthday, so a very special birthday to Doreen as well. And Norm, I know you're watching, so happy birthday to you. Uh, yesterday, uh, we sent out information uh, about the memorial services for our beloved uh, Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler, still uh, grieving uh, that huge loss for this church and this community. They celebrated uh, in Nisha's hometown in Texas yesterday. They will celebrate today in Daniel's hometown in Ohio. That service is at 2.30, and if the link to that service is uh, on our Facebook page and also uh, was emailed out to everybody if you would like to join in. Please continue to keep uh, that, those families in our prayers and this community as we grieve uh, everything that this family meant to us uh, in this church. But let's today remember to give thanks. Give thanks for uh, the relationships that we have been given, our church family, for life, for faith, and for all good things. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 107 to give thanks, so let's do that. Please join me in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Let us be thankful for God's steadfast love. And let us offer thanksgiving sacrifices. Come, let us worship our God gathered from near and far. Come 
let us return unto the Gracious Lord God, we come into your presence this day. We lift our prayers to you as we return to you, as we return from exile, from this sanctuary, with joy, with praise unending, we gather. We return to you and your ways, O Lord, knowing that when we remember who you created us to be, we find true life in the treasures of heaven. When we lift you up, we remember that there is no other God, no other idol, no other God for us. There is no other way for us to live, for all other ways are false and lead to dead ends. Holy, holy, holy one, how good it is to gather as your church and wherever we are as the body of Christ. We choose to worship you alone this day. Remind us, O oh Lord, of what is holy and good and true. In the name of Christ, who leads us into life, we pray. Amen.
Sin has consequences, and they are never good. When we fail to keep God's commandments, when we are quick to sin, we should be even quicker to seek forgiveness. Repentance leads to life, reconciliation with our relationships with God and our relationships with each other. So let us now pray together and confess this using the words of this prayer of confession. God, who so loves the world, you sent us your only Son, so that we might believe and have eternal life. We have often failed to understand that eternity begins now, and that the life you offer is here and transcends death. We have often failed to understand that how we live matters, and that we sometimes participate in the sins of this world without recognizing it. We have often sinned in our purchases, in our desires, in our shrugging shoulders, in our longing to just focus on ourselves. Forgive us and call us from our sinful, selfish ways. Call us back to you, God who so loves the world, so that we might remember who came not to condemn, but to save. Help us to turn our hearts and to be restored to you. In the name of Christ, who redeems us all, we pray. receives each and every one of us just as we are because of God's deep and abiding love for each of us. God loves us very much. God desires for us to live whole, forgiven lives. And so loving God and loving our neighbor, we fulfill that law. Seeking forgiveness through repentance, we are forgiven and we can go therefore and forgive others. Believe this good news that in Christ our sins are forgiven and now live in peace. Amen. And now something that I have not said or done in, well, almost a year. I'd like to invite the children who are here to come join me down front. <laughs> Stay here. You can 
this right here. Okay, you can see it. Thank you for coming down. That felt good to say that. So what is different? Anything different in here? I know you haven't sat up here for a while. Look around. Anything look different? Anything you see? You're like, I don't know. Everybody is a year older. That's what it is. You guys are a year older. You're all a year older. I'm a year older. I can't believe it. It's been a year since you've sat up here. I cannot believe that. But this is the journey that we are on, and things are different. We're wearing masks now. Hopefully that you know, will go away, and it will soon. Uh, we've done some major improvements in the sanctuary. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? It really does. The sanctuary is so beautiful. I have a broken heart behind me. You're going to see that heart come together on Easter. It's going to be repaired. It's going to be whole again. And so you'll see that happen. But we've been on this journey, all of us. And this journey has led us to different places over this past year. Now, let me just, and I'm going to talk about that in the sermon today from uh, the book of Numbers. And let me just uh, give you this example. If I were to go, if I wanted to go out that door over there, what would be the quickest, easiest way to get there from here? Would I go that way? If I wanted to get out that door? No, I would just go like this. I go straight out the door, right? But let's just say I did go this way. Just to, just to say I took the journey this way. I don't know why I turned this way, but I came this way, and I just kept walking. I'm trying to get out that door over there. Seems kind of silly that I'm way over here, right? It does. I don't know why I'm over here. Honestly, I don't want to be over here. I want to be over there. But here I am, over here. God, what is going on? Just keep walking. Keep walking. God's with me. I know that. So maybe I go a different way. But look at what happens. Just keep walking. Keep walking. <laughs> All right. I'll... Made it through the door. So what is the problem? There's no problem. I just went a different way. I didn't go the way that I wanted to go, maybe. I didn't go the fastest way. I went the way that maybe God wanted me to go. And that's the thing. You have not been sitting up here for a year. But look, here you are. Here you are. We're sitting here. It's been this long journey all the way around, but here we are again. Trust the Lord in all things. It's okay to go the long way sometimes. But keep walking and you'll get there. That's the whole point. One other thing, and I'm going to share this with you. What did I have to walk by in order to get out that door? What's this right here? A cross. I had to go by it. Look at it when you go by it. We're all going to go by that cross to get out that door. So stop and take a good look at it, because right here, this is where that broken heart was healed. This is what is going to get us through that door and get us along this journey that we are on together. Look at the cross. The Bible tells us, look at the cross and live. Let's pray together. God, I'm so grateful for this day. Thank you for bringing us together in this house of worship. Thank you for being with us on this journey. And as we continue this journey of returning to you and coming back together, give us patience, Lord. Help us to trust you each and every step of the way. Bless our children, bless their families, and our church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you both for coming up here. God bless you.
to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. to see you. This is the story of the bronze serpent comes from the book of Numbers. God's people on this journey exiled, being led by Moses. I'm going to go through this, it's just five short verses. I'd like to go through it today verse by verse, if you would allow me to do that. If you have a Bible or a Bible app and you want to follow along, uh, you can do that. Beginning Numbers uh, chapter 21, beginning with verse 4. Let me say a prayer first, though. God, we uh, come before you now to hear your word. I pray that your spirit would illumine our hearts, minds to understanding. Let all with ears listen and hear. Bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse 4, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. Okay, here we go again. <clears throat> People's impatience is going to most certainly lead to one thing at least, complaining. If you heard the message last week, you heard me talk about the pattern of complaint and provision. The people complain, God provides. God provides, the people complain. And so now they're growing impatient. And you know when somebody gets impatient, they tend to complain. If you've ever, ever been along, on a long trip with a child, they're like, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? In the passage prior, the Israelites were denied passage through Edom, and the reason for that is not relevant to today's message. Let's just suffice it to say they had to go around. They had to take the long way. And like I told the kids sitting up here, if you have to go around, if you have to take the long way, so what? It's okay. It's okay to take the scenic view once in a while, right? You know, the road less traveled. Have you ever heard that? Life is not a race to be won. It is a journey to be in, 
lived. Perhaps we should be less concerned about winning the race and more concerned with finishing the race. And not only finishing the race, but finishing it well. Ah, that sounds like the new, better version of Pastor Jeff talking. I can hear it. Yes, finishing well. Verse 5. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Wait, there's no food and no water, and you detest the miserable food. That means there is food, you just don't like it. Worse than that, you detest it. The Hebrew word there is kutz, which literally means you loathe it, you abhor it, you feel a sickening dread. It makes you want to vomit. That's what the word literally means. It makes you want to vomit. So basically, I hear them saying, yeah, I know, we complain that we didn't have any food, and then you gave us food, but it's disgusting. It makes me want to vomit this manna that you gave us. I would like to think that if that were me, the new better version of me, I would, and if I were wandering in the wilderness and I was wanting something or needing something, even desperately hungry, starving, and somebody gave me something, just gave it to me, that I might just say, thank you. Thank you. Not these people. I detest this miserable food. Wow. Do you ever wonder whether God just grows weary of people? Weary? Verse 6. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. <laughs> so I'm not laughing. It's not funny, but it sounds like God's weary of people. The answer is yes, I am. There you go. At least it appears as though God is weary. That may not be the case. Now I know at this point in the story it sounds harsh. Poisonous snakes? Literally the Hebrew fiery serpents. But keep in mind, not for nothing, the people did speak against God. It's right there in verse 5. They spoke against God. Perhaps they had it coming. Sometimes you get what you deserve. So then what happens? Verse 7. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the servants, serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. See, now this is good. This is good. The people realized that what they did was wrong. They repented almost immediately. They turned around and they said, Hey, we messed up. We spoke against God. We never should have done that. We're so sorry. Hey, Moses, could you go back up there and talk to God and, you know, just politely ask to take away the snakes? We're sorry. Moses says, okay. <laughs> just like that. Okay. I got to give Moses a lot of credit here. Why? Because the, sp the people spoke against him, too. They were just as critical of Moses as they were of God. And Moses had every right, in my humble opinion, to say, excuse me, what? Oh, now you need something from me, so I'm your best friend? Okay, how about, no. You bite me with your words, you deserve to be bitten. Sometimes you get what you deserve. And sometimes you don't get what you deserve. And so Moses prays on their behalf. Moses seeks God's grace. Or that which we don't deserve. He becomes an intercessor, you see, for the people. Moses, people, God, Moses. And of course, I realize that Scripture tells us that he prayed. It doesn't say what he prayed. 
So we can only imagine, I imagine Moses, for all we know, he's down on his knees praying, God, please, I can't take this anymore. I can't leave these people anymore. They're driving me crazy. They complain. They speak against you. They speak against me. Can you, were you really serious when you said no more floods? Because I'll start building a boat right now. How about it? Just you and me, God, we'll start over together. What was God's answer to Moses' prayer? Verse 8. The Lord said to Moses, "Uh, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Uh, Okay. I guess I could do that if you really want me to. Lord, I was serious about building the ark, but if you want me to build a snake on a pole, I can do that. Sometimes God answers prayer in the most unusual ways, right? (laughs) Verse 9, So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. I give credit to Moses yet again because God's answer to Moses' prayer was a bit obscure and yet God did what Moses did what God asked him to do. God said it. Who am I to question it? If that's God's answer to prayer, why not just accept it? Who am I to question it? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's, it's okay. I am saying it's okay to have doubts. Lord knows this life has given us enough fiery snake bites, especially this year, to make us wonder what in the world is going on. Where is God in all of this? But perhaps Moses' response to God and to God's word is instructive for us. Maybe we could live a little more like Moses. Faith, obedience, trust. Faith, obedience, trust. But here's the thing in all reality. The snake on a pole wasn't such a strange request, actually, if you think about it. To me, it wasn't a magical cure for snake bites that God was offering. No, it was something very different. To me, it was an invitation for the people to change their posture. Look up and live. Look up and live. All you have been doing this entire journey, let's call it life, is complain about what's right in front of you. Okay, you don't like manna. I get it. It doesn't taste that good. But it's not about the manna. It's about the fact, the truth, that you have been wandering in a wilderness without food and without water, and somehow, miraculously, God has given you food and water. It is, the, it is the miracle that even though you don't think so and you can't see it, God is giving you exactly what you need, providing for you all along. And it may not be what you want. You might want to go straight out that door. But it might be what you need. But tell you, I'm telling you, people, you're, you're too busy looking at the ground, thinking that life is so detestable, and you can only see what's right in front of you. Lift up your heads. Change your posture. Open yourself up to the work of God all around you. Take notice of the beauty of each day. There's a future ahead of you if you look up Yes, the road may be long. Yes, it may go a way that you don't want it to. You may be going, taking the long way around, but what's the difference? Either way, God is with you. Either way, God is providing for you. 
Either way, every place along the way, whether it's just somebody giving you whatever it is, just say thank you. Be grateful for it. Keep walking. You'll get there. Faith, obedience, trust. You know, we can't read this passage without turning and without sharing the, the gospel passage for today. So it's, it's a little familiar, John 3, 16. <laughs> Maybe you know that one. I'm going to start at verse 14, though. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. People, let's not waste another day looking at just what is right in front of us. Lift up your heads. Change your posture. Look up and live. Look at Jesus nailed to the cross. God's broken heart coming together to heal ours. And as I will sing in just a minute with Chanel, look to the hill where our Savior died. See a love so faithful, so divine. By grace, in his wounds I am purified. Behold the Son, he is lifted high. And I know that there is so much that happens in life that keeps our, our eyes down and our shoulders slumped and our hearts broken. But today I invite each and every one of us to change our posture, to look up at the cross of Christ and to live, live in Jesus' name. One of the transitions we're working on is how best to allow you to uh, make an offering of gratitude. There is a box on the wall on the way out. If you are here and you would like to leave an offering, you may leave it in there as you depart today. Otherwise, as many of you have been doing, you can continue to give online. And I invite those who are watching the service today uh, to do that, to give as the Lord has given to you. And I will offer this offering and this song of praise now. Oh, the 
the cost of love now demands my life, Son of God, be lifted high. Run to the grave where the Savior lay, find the living one who took my place, his wounds marked with shame now are glorified behold the sun he is lifted high oh how great a love oh how rich the price for the sinner's heart what a sacrifice oh the cost of love now To lift you high, I will fall on my knees to lift you high, to lift you high, I will fall on my knees to lift you high. To lift you high, to lift you high, to lift you Another posture that we should turn to often is the posture of prayer, to bow humbly to our God who loves us, to seek God's guidance, God's grace, God's wisdom, to pour out our hearts. Broken and humble we come. I want to share as the prayer today this uh, passage from Isaiah chapter 40 which describes a joyful return, a return from exile. For those of you who are here in this sanctuary, may God bless you, your families. For those who are faithfully watching from home or wherever you are, may God's grace lift you up. We are the body of Christ. May we love God again with all our hearts and love each other as ourselves. And I want to say one more word of gratitude uh, because the consistory of this church has also been hugely supportive throughout this time of exile and ha has had to make some very difficult decisions about what we do as a church 
and how we do it. And I just want to thank each and every one of them, our elders and deacons, for uh, supporting us through this time. And continue to pray for them. We will meet again on Tuesday as we plan a way forward. And yes, it will include plans for Holy Week and Easter. Uh, it is our desire to be together as much as possible during that week. And so uh, continue to watch our Facebook page and emails and YouTube, and uh, we'll get word out to you about all of each and every one of those services. Let us pray together. Why do you say, Jacob, and declare, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my God ignores my predicament? Don't you know, haven't you heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men and women will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. And they will walk and not be weary. O oh God, you who created all that is, help us to believe when our hearts doubt, to be obedient to your word when our strength gives out, and to trust you when our eyes and ears deceive. Lord, you touch our past, you shape our present, and now inspire our future in the same creative, caring ways you have always done. We look up to you, O Lord, and to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before you, lost in wonder, love, and praise. In the name of Jesus, who suffered on the cross and gave us the hope of new life, we now lift up this prayer as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
going to send you out into this world. If you are watching uh, online, I invite you to switch over to our children and worship story time if you have children to watch that. And also, if it's birthday Sunday, the Zoom invite was emailed to those of you who would like to join us after the service is over. I'd love to see you there and wish everyone a happy birthday. Take a deep breath. Go out into this world. Change your posture. Look up and live this blessed life that we all have to live together. Go in peace.